So you've done it. You've tightened your timings. You think that you are complete. But there could be just a little bit more performance you can squeeze out of your RAM kit. And I know you're interested in improving your gaming performance, which is why you're here with the graying tech. So in this video, I'm going to go over some more of the advanced tuning options that you have available in the DRAM calculator. And I'm going to wrap all of this up by going over the troubleshooting steps and some items that I missed in the previous video so that you are fully prepared to take on this challenge. So the first thing that we're going to do is try to look at how we can get even tighter timings with the RAM that you have. So normally you've clicked calculate safe and that gives you variables that are supposed to work with the majority of systems that are out there with the majority of the pieces of RAM that you have. But there's also this calculate fast button. When you click that, you will notice some changes. Cast latency got tighter, for example. The write time here got tighter as well. And the voltages over here changed. Lastly, you'll note this gear down mode. This also changed. Gear down has to be turned off in order for you to have odd number cast latency. For my system, it would not work without gear down being enabled, so I never was able to actually enter this 15 cast latency. But essentially, you're going to take these same numbers and work through the same process that you did previously, incrementally changing, adjusting for errors, things like that. The second way that you can improve your performance is by having higher frequency. Now remember, the cast latency and the frequency work together to try to give you the best overall latency for your system. We're going to get into that number just in a little bit because that's going to be important. But if you click frequency, you can change this value to whatever really you want it to be. In this instance, I went up 200 megahertz. And if I click calculate safe, you'll note some additional changes. Our read time has now increased to 20. Cast latency is back to 16, 16. The TRC has also increased as well as the RAS. But over here, you'll notice items in red. Items in red typically will not work. That's kind of outside of the range for a lot of systems. And so that's why these items are in red. The infinity clock fabric right here is set to 1900. Older motherboards had a problem as well as the 3000 series had a problem getting this fast of an infinity fabric. The 5000 series doesn't necessarily seem to have this problem, but you can see our memory has increased almost to its very, very limit. So we are, we are very much skirting the edge with these two numbers. Gear down mode in this case has been re-enabled. Now, if you really feel like you have super RAM, you can also increase the frequency and click this fast button just to see if it gives you a little bit more. In this case, I'm not really seeing too many changes outside of the read time being reduced down here to 19. So those are the two ways you can get additional performance following the same exact methodology that we have been working through. In order to even try this frequency, you're going to have to reduce down most of your primary timings to spec and then start working your way up from those values. You're going to have to consider one additional thing here, though, and that is the relationship between TLC and the frequency. So you have to be very careful about ending up with higher latency, even though you have faster frequency. This could lead to diminished performance. What do I mean by that? If you take the previous number that we've been using, 3.6 gigahertz, that has a 16 cast latency. That's what we've been able to hit. And so if you use this formula right here, you can see what the primary latency of that would be, 8.8 nanoseconds. Now, if you were trying to go up to 38, you can increase your cast latency a little bit. But if you go to go to say 18 instead of this 17, you would actually have worse overall latency than if you stuck at 3616. You can also see this is an odd number, which means the gear down mode has to be disabled, which could lead to instability on the system. With the 4000, you have a little bit more playroom. You can see you might be able to go to 18 and be able to be on par here with the 16. Those are the, the values, the calculations that you actually have to think about if you're trying to increase the overall frequency not to do so at the expense 
of overall latency. So let's wrap this up by a quick review of these troubleshooting steps. And I've added a few little extra tips in here just in case you are running into some trouble. So first off, a lot of people will run into an issue where if they've constantly been changing their values, nothing works. Nothing just becomes stable. So you can shut your system down, start it, boot into Windows, and then restart it again. This is a double boot. And this helps do something with the RAM. I don't know if it's the memory training or if it's just the BIOS resetting completely or the fact that you've allowed the capacitors to discharge a little bit. Whatever it is, this actually has allowed me to continue to dial in settings that haven't worked before. So this is, this is a big tip, something I overlooked in the previous video. Second, you see a range and this range here for SOC goes from 1.0 all the way up to 1.1. So previous video, I only talked about increasing voltage, but you can also decrease voltage. And again, I forgot to mention that. So you can go up or you can go down with inside of this range to see if you can get something that's stable. So try the shutdown method. If you're seeing blue screens of death, go ahead and address your SOC voltage. Now that's specifically memory management blue screen of death. If you see an IRQ conflict, that's more likely to be the DRAM voltage itself. And again, this is a plus or minus range. Go up, go down, see if you can get something that's stable at that point. If you're still not able to, there's an entire other range of voltages, the VDDGs, that you can change too. So you can see there's a lot of different permutations of these voltage settings that you can play around with to try to get a stable, higher frequency or stable, tighter timings. If you need to, you can also change your proct ODT. You're going to want to go up to 60. You're going to go down to 40. Somewhere in that range is where you should be playing. Lastly, and this is probably the most controversial thing I'm going to say. When in doubt, put it back to auto. We took a screenshot already of the Ryzen Master to get the exact voltages that the system was automatically applying. And you know what? When I put these values back to auto, it put it into these specific values, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, and 1.05. And you can see it's all over the recommended range here, including being slightly lower than what the DRAM calculator here recommended. So when in doubt, if you are having trouble, if something just is not working right, don't be afraid to just move it back to auto and see what happens. In some instances, you're going to get stability. You're going to get better performance and potentially save a little bit of time. But ultimately, what you are going for is a system that performs very, very well and is extremely stable. So once you have everything dialed in and you're, you're seeing signs of a very stable system, it is worth it to simply come back in here, type 400 or 500 into this and run a total test. See where the system itself is landing once you've done everything and have it go for a long period of time. If everything is great, you will not see any error ever. But the main question you need to ask yourself here was all of this worth it. In the next video, I'm going to go over all of the benchmarks and I'm going to compare the stock settings, which you see here against what I am seeing in both standard benchmarks in latency testing and in games. And I will give you some commentary on if all of this has been worth it up to this point or not.